The earliest elephant had more in common with a rabbit than it did with a mammoth. Some grew to be 15 feet high. Other prehistoric elephants stood as tall as our waists. From scary huge to petting zoo cute, what well, really made these mammals go extinct? One of the earliest of the elephants was the Eritherium. While we don't have much to go off of, it had a snout roughly resembling that of a wallabies and was the size of a rabbit. It seems more suited for a petting zoo than wide savannas or dense jungles, don't you think? Science Daily explains that this 11-pound small mammal remained in Morocco, where it roamed roughly 60 million years ago, about 5 million years after the extinction of the dinosaurs. Eritherium was an important ancestral species, with the Princeton Field Guide to Prehistoric Animals placing them as the common ancestor of not only elephants, but manatees and dugongs as well. According to The Guardian, what we know about Eritherium is limited and based on partial fossils from about 15 individuals. It's believed that Eritherium did not so much go extinct, but evolved into the larger animals of the elephant order. During the Eocene Epoch, which lasted from 55.8 to 33.9 million years ago, elephant evolution stepped up with the appearance of the genus Myritherium in northern Africa. According to Britannica, this animal still didn't look anything like an elephant. Rather, if you were to go back in a time machine and you looked at a Myritherium, you might understandably confuse it with a South American taper, since it closely resembled one in shape and size. The animal likely had a flexible snout, which was the apparent forerunner of a trunk. In addition, its upper and lower incisors were developing into four tusks. National Geographic suggests that the Myritherium lived in fresh water, such as in rivers or swamps because chemical signatures from fossilized teeth show evidence of a diet to freshwater plants. That suggests Myritherium was at least semi-aquatic. As for what happened to Myritherium, it is likely that it evolved into ladder elephants. My boy, this goofy little stinker, he loves all things elephant, wants to be one when he grows up. <coughs> is that adorable? Generation by generation, these animals grew larger and tusks evolved into various shapes depending on what was needed for survival. One of these early giants and cousin to today's elephants was the genus Dinotherium, which had at least three species which roamed Africa and Eurasia from the Miocene to the Pleistocene. National Geographic says that an African elephant of today weighs up to 7 tons with a maximum height of 13 feet. A Dinotherium could exceed that height but also had a lot more weight, up to 10 tons. Yet what made Dinotherium stand out from modern elephants is that it had two downward curving tusks on its lower jaw, the opposite of an elephant today. A certain amount of conjecture has been given as to how Dinotherium used these chin tusks. Originally, it was thought to be used to dig up the ground searching for food. However, through examination of the ancient markings on the tusks, it is even more likely that Dinotherium used them to strip bark off trees, or even pull trees down. According to Lothagam, the dawn of humanity in East Africa, Dinotherium died out in Eurasia by the time of the Pliocene, possibly due to climate change. However, a remnant population hung out in Africa until the early Pleistocene, about 2.5 million years ago. According to Britannica, the Gomphotheres included numerous species which usually had four tusks. It's still unclear if this group was the direct ancestors of today's elephants or a sister group. However, we do know that they were numerous and widespread, roaming a huge portion of the Earth between 23 million to 11,700 years ago. They'd even reached South America after that continent first linked to North America some 2.8 million years ago. Gomphotheres thrived and diversified into numerous species right through the end of the Miocene about 5.3 million years ago. After that, the group's diversity declined. There seems to be two reasons for this. First, more modern elephant species had developed, and possibly Gomphotheres species declined from this competition. Second, their extinction was probably exacerbated by climate change, the cooling of Earth's atmosphere, and changing ecosystems. However, some Gomphotheres managed to hang on. Remains were found at sites in the Americas as early as 12,000 years ago. Perhaps these last stressed populations may have been pushed over the edge through human exploitation. One unusual Gomphothere was Platybelodon. According to the Dinosaurs and Other Prehistoric Life, Platybelodon looked mainly like elephants, except that their lower jaw was extended out in what looked like a large spade or shovel. The Platybelodon was not alone in this evolutionary design choice. As Scientific American explains, this morphology occurred in other elephant relatives such as Amabelodon. These so-called shovel tuskers ranged worldwide and were originally thought to have used its lower mandible to scoop up mud from ponds or swamps to gobble up the plants contained therein. 
However, as NPR reported, this view was revised in the 1990s after a close examination of Platybelodon's beveled teeth showed that it was more likely that it used its mouth to grasp onto trees and saw. It then ate coarse vegetation and twigs. Whether a shoveler or a sar, these animals were definitely specialized. Specialization leads to vulnerabilities, and you would struggle to adapt if your environment suddenly changes. The Living Elephant notes that a global cooling trend about 10 million years ago led to the growth of grasslands and arid conditions. It is likely that these conditions led to their extinction at that time. The mouthful of a genus name that is Stegotetrabelodon is probably the direct ancestor of mammoths and today's elephants. Adventures in the Bone Trade points out that this Miocene animal differed from today's elephants because it had two long lower tusks, in addition to the two upper ones. Scientists, as detailed in mammoths, have been able to trace the ancestry of today's elephants to Stegotetrabelodon through an examination of the teeth. All species had flat-ridged molars. Recent findings have also shown that these animals behaved like modern elephant species. Live Science reported that paleontologists discovered 7 million-year-old fossilized tracks of 13 Stegotetrabelodon individuals in the Arabian deserts, which, at that time, was a flourishing wetland filled with large herding animals. The tracks were made as individuals walked through the mud, and it was a big deal. It was the first direct evidence of elephant herding behavior, similar to what's seen in today's animals. In addition, solitary tracks from a presumably lone male shows that there was a structured society. While the reasons for Stegotetrabelodon's extinction are unknown, it is likely that climate changes played a role for those lines that did not evolve into mammoths and elephants. Mastodons looked like elephants, undoubtedly had many of the same behaviors as elephants, but were in fact just a distant cousin, which co-evolved with many of the same traits. Still, mastodons did have some key differences from elephants. Their teeth were more primitive, their skulls lower and simpler, and the ears were smaller. They were generally shorter, though strongly built. Males also had two short lower tusks and were also covered with reddish hair. According to live science, mastodons first appeared 27 to 30 million years ago. While their geographic range was large, their concentration was primarily in Central and North America. Mastodons lived until 11,000 years ago, with their last home in North America. Their extinction, as reported by The Guardian, seems to be rooted in climate change. When the climate warmed, mastodons migrated as forests, their natural habitat grew. However, as cooling came with an ice age, forests receded and populations were isolated. This reduced genetic diversity and finally, human hunting probably contributed to their final extinction. From the late Miocene to the late Pleistocene, in other words, 2.5 million to 11,700 years ago, the Stegodons roamed Africa and Asia. As described by a study led by the Department of Archaeology and Natural History of the Australian National University, this group radiated into a large variety of species. Stegodons are most closely related to today's Asian elephants with some notable differences, including a longer and lower body. Stegodons lived at the same time as Asian elephants and had their own separate herds. This brings up the obvious question of how can two massive animals coexist in large numbers without depleting all available resources? The answer is that they had different feeding habits and habitats. The Stegodon was a forest dweller while the Asian elephant ate vegetation from both open savanna and wood. Diet may have been the primary culprit for Stegodon's extinction. The flexibility of the Asian elephant's dietary habits allowed it to adapt to changing climatic conditions, while the Stegodon was placed under stress. As the climate shifted between ice ages coupled with volcanism, the Stegodon died out because it could not easily adapt to changing conditions. The mammoth is the poster child for ice age fauna. According to Britannica, this close relative of elephants roamed through North America, Eurasia, and Africa during the Pleistocene and was directly hunted by humans. Of the various species of mammoths, the most famous is the woolly mammoth, so-called for the shaggy reddish coat that covered its immense body. Do you think my ankles look fat? Ankles? What ankles? The woolly variety is most known because of the amount of well-preserved findings, with some specimens being wholly frozen in permafrost ice within the Arctic Circle. The quantity of material to analyze has led to several theories as to why woolly mammoths went extinct. One primary reason, as explained by Smithsonian, is that climate change led to warmer climates at the end of the last ice age and disrupted the woolly mammoth's tundra habitat through the growth of forests. This led to isolated populations, which became genetically inbred. These stresses were made worse through hunting by human populations. The last woolly mammoth population lasted on Wrangell Island in the Arctic Circle until they experienced the level of inbreeding that led to extinction. 
There were a variety of mammoth species. This guy is standing next to the right leg of a species called Mammatus impeter, and here, that's the skull. This mammoth wasn't even the biggest. The largest was the Columbian mammoth. According to the National Park Service, this species of mammoth evolved from earlier woolly mammoths that had migrated from northern regions to the south. The Columbian mammoth was found throughout southern North America and into Central America. Almost all of today's United States would have had Columbian mammoths thundering about in it. Don't be fooled, it isn't thunder. Staying put would be a blunder. Like other mammoths, the Columbian lived in large herds, devouring as much vegetation as it could so that it could grow. And grow it did. Columbian mammoths were a massive size, being up to 11 tons and 13 feet at the shoulder. And while they were indeed mammoths, they lacked the woolly hair of their northern kindred. This mammoth, like other mammoths, was hit by a warming climate at the end of the last ice age that altered its environment. They died off after humans first migrated into the Americas and disappeared between 13,000 and 10,000 years ago. Standing nearly 15 feet high and weighing over 14 tons, the straight-tusked elephants were the largest elephants ever to exist and possibly the largest land mammal to have ever walked the Earth. The UK's Natural History Museum reports that this genus, Paleoloxodon, was highly widespread during the last million years with a variety of species. Adaptable, the species changed as it spread east from grazing behavior to browsing. This is presumably to avoid direct competition with mammoths. Straight-tusked elephants were so successful that they evolved into several species. Aside from their enormity, straight-tusked elephants are recognizable by a band that ran around individual skulls. The band presumably helped support its massive head, and naturally, its somewhat straighter tusks. These early elephants survived until about 21,000 years ago and definitely interacted with humans. Get in the truck. Or get in your house. Come on, get in your house. Good girl. A Paleolithic site in Italy shows evidence of butchery. However, it is unclear what role humans had in the extinction of straight-tusked elephants. It seems likely that the wild swings of climate during the Ice Ages played a role. The biggest elephants ever were the straight-tusked elephants, but ironically, their stock gave rise to the smallest. As these elephants migrated through the world, some colonized islands, such as those in the Mediterranean. New Scientist relates how they quickly morphed into much smaller species through an evolutionary process called island dwarfism. How much smaller did these elephants get? Fossils found on Sicily show these elephants lost over 17,500 pounds in weight and over 6.5 feet in height. Incredibly, the rate of evolutionary change was so intense that researchers believe that this species lost about 440 pounds per generation. The New York Times reported that at this rate, it could theoretically only take 40 generations for the elephants to reach dwarf size, though in reality, it was probably anywhere up to 352,000 years. The smallest of these dwarf elephants was Paleoloxodon falconeri, and they lived on Sicily and Malta. A bull elephant of this species barely topped an adult man's waist. In island populations, there is not as much genetic diversity with a smaller population, which makes them vulnerable to extinction events. It is believed that climate change and tectonic activity led to the extinction of the falconry some 400,000 years ago, while other species survived until about 19,000 years ago.